Admiral Byrd said when he went down there, they saw uh, what looked like frozen palm leaves under the ice near the South Pole. Well, there are no palm trees. You can hardly get palm trees to grow in Pensacola, you know. It gets too cold in the winter and kills them off once in a while. And yet down at the South Pole, they find palm leaves? Hmm. Scientists reported discovering the first set of dinosaur fossils found in Antarctica. Well, that's the bottom of the world, you know, the Antarctica way down here. Dinosaurs? Reptiles? They don't live good in cold weather. The fossils are said to be the remains of a plant-eating dinosaur 25 to 30 feet long. They lived about 200 million years ago. I would disagree strongly with that, but in what geologists call the Jurassic Age, the bones were spotted at a small section of exposed rock alongside the mountain, which lies about 400 miles from the South Pole. Frozen dinosaur bones. Also, the discovery of thousands of well-preserved leaves in Antarctica has sparked a debate among geologists over whether the polar region, rather than being blanketed by a massive sheet of ice for millions of years, enjoyed a near-temperate climate as recently as three million years ago. In January, Mr. Webb with Dave Harwood, an assistant professor of geology at the University of Nebraska, and these other guys, found the deposit of leaves on the side of a cliff in a desolate stretch of the Transarctic Mountains, Antarctic Mountains, about 250 miles from the South Pole. The leaves, compressed by subsequent layers of ice, look like fossils, but unlike fossils, which leave only mineral traces, the leaves retain their original cellular structure. How are you going to get leaves at the South Pole? Even a few years ago, they discovered there's still chunks of ice hitting the atmosphere of the Earth. Chunks of ice as big as this church are hitting the Earth every day. Now they're being burned up on the way in, thankfully, being melted and vaporized, but it ends up being water added to space, added to our atmosphere. Next thought. The North Pole, there's actually two North Poles. There's the geographic North Pole where we spin around. If you look at any globe, they'll, the place right there where the pin goes to is called the, oh, spins the other way, is the geographic North Pole. But up in Canada here, there's what's called the magnetic North Pole. Now, the Earth has two North Poles. The compass points toward the magnetic North Pole. Now, here in Florida, they line up. It's not a problem. But if you went over to Alaska, your magnetic North Pole, your, your compass would not point true north. You'd have to allow for all that. And anybody that flies an airplane up around that region knows you have to allow for how much your compass is off because it doesn't really point true north. I think what happened, these mammoths were up there chomping on their tropical flowers. It was a beautiful day, about 70 degrees. They're eating buttercups, seeds found in their stomach indicate it was warm weather, springtime. And all of a sudden it began to snow. The mammoths had never seen snow before. So one of them looked at the other one. He said, Herman, it is snowing. Man, this is peculiar weather we're having. Let's get out of here, Herman. And so they began to run around trying to find a place to hide, and the snow got deeper and deeper and deeper as it began to snow this super cold, 300 below zero snow on top of these mammoths. They ended up getting buried, and they suffocated in this snowbank and froze standing up. Froze in three to five hours because the snow was so cold. Buried them. As the ice went pushing out toward the equator, it carved out the glacier effects that we see. There are grooves in solid rock, grooves as deep as this building, for miles. As if a rock was slid across another rock, <laughs> sliding across, scratching it. Glacial grooves found all over the place. And the ice went all the way down to southern Illinois. Yes, there really was an ice age. And as this mass of ice was on the north and south pole, that's, of course, going to cause a cold front to come off of there, which is going to collapse the canopy. The Bible says the water above the atmosphere, because it's mentioned several times in the Bible, this water above the atmosphere would, I think, begin to collapse, and it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. See, cold air, when it hits warm air, it makes it rain. You can open the freezer and see the cold air come out rolling onto the floor. How many have ever seen that before? Kind of a cold front coming out of your freezer. Sometimes the weatherman will say there's a Canadian cold front coming down across the Midwest. I heard that in Dallas, Texas, or somewhere near Dallas, they had the world's record, world's record temperature drop. I don't know if I got the numbers right, but I think it went in 20 minutes from 100 degrees to 2 degrees on a cold front. Something similar. It's incredible. Almost a 100-degree drop in just a few minutes as this cold front came in. Uh, across. I think it was in Dallas or somewhere near there. But In Genesis chapter 7, God said in the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, 17th day of the month, 
the fountains of the great deep were broken up. All the fountains of the great deep were broken up. Apparently, there used to be water under the crust of the earth, and that got broken up, all of it, same day. All that water came shooting up to the surface. So this ice dumped on the North Pole would crack the crust of the earth and release the fountains of the deep, and they came shooting up to the top. Water that used to be underneath shot up to the top. And everything got cold, and the canopy collapsed overhead. They had water coming from both sides in the days of this flood, so Noah's friends and neighbors that weren't on the ark were out of luck. Genesis chapter 7, verse 19 tells us, All the high hills under the whole heaven were covered. You say, come on, is it possible to cover the earth with water? Well, <clears throat> theoretically, one drop of world will cover the water. One drop of water will cover the world if you spread it real thin. But yeah, there's enough water out there in the oceans to cover the earth about a mile and a half deep. I flew back over the Pacific coming back from Australia. I told one of the guys in my office, I said, man, the Pacific Ocean is huge. He said, that's just the top of it. I thought, man, that's a powerful thought. That was just the top of it. If you shrank the earth down to the size of a 12-inch globe like this one right here, all the water in the world would not even fill two tablespoons. Earth is actually pretty smooth compared to its size here. When they climbed Mount Everest in 1953, Edmund Hillary got up to the 26,000-foot level, and he began to find seashells. I got some stuff like it, like they found up there. Petrified clams. Seashells packed together. Millions of them. Interesting thing about these clams that are found even on top of, the, on top of uh, Mount Everest, the clams are petrified and dead, I believe, and closed. Well, you can walk along the beach and pick up a whole train load of seashells but you hardly ever find a matched pair. And you never find them closed. The only way this could happen is he had to be buried alive. I've got a few buckets of these at home people have given me. Petrified clams in a closed position. Why do you get these on top of Mount Everest? Well, in case you don't know, Mount Everest is a little ways from the beach. Secondly, clams don't climb mountains very good. So what happened to these petrified clams anyway? Huh. Some places they are 10 feet thick in the world. There's a guy up in Alabama said one day, Brother Hovind, you want some petrified clams? I said, yeah, why? He said, they're four feet thick in my backyard. Every time he rototills his garden, he brings up thousands of them. Petrified closed clams. Well, the only way I can figure out for this to happen is there had to be an awful lot of clams buried instantly. I think during the flood, when the fountains of the deep broke open, you would get mudslides and you would bury them quickly. The Bible says all the fountains of the deep were broken up and the windows of heaven were opened. What I suspect happened, this cracks in the crust of the earth let the water come shooting out, and the earth wobbled for a while from the weight of the ice being dumped on the north and south pole, and you'd have a lot of things going on simultaneously to the poor folks outside of the ark. There wasn't much chance of survival for them. The earth cracked along the mid-Atlantic ridge, sort of like a balloon splitting. If you take a balloon and you blow it up real big and you poke one hole in one side, how long does it take for the other side of the balloon to split? Almost instantly, right? That crack spreads around the balloon just like that. Well, I think that happened to the earth. The earth split open. The fountains of the deep came shooting out. Hot water came shooting out from inside the crust of the earth. And this hot water came out to the top probably shot way up into the stratosphere. As it went shooting out along these cracks, it would erode the sides of the cracks, adding lots of mud to the water. And this mud's going to spread out everywhere. You get sediment layers everywhere, all over the earth, from this mud spreading out. It might even push the continental plate a little bit. And the pushing of these plates sliding, as long as the water's underneath for lubricant, you get the plates actually sliding, and they would smash into another plate and wrinkle up the mountain ranges that we see. The mid-Atlantic ridge as the plates slid back, the bottom of it, the basalt underneath, lifted up and bulged and split open as it, as it uh, bent. And that splitting caused the water to go down in and made the mid-Atlantic ridge lines that we see.